This episode and others like it are made possible by the generous support of my patrons on Patreon. If you would like to help support this channel and get early access to every video, consider becoming a patron on patreon.com slash cityscapes. Cityscapes here and welcome back to Darville episode 60. It's already the end of February, very deep into the winter here in Switzerland and I've been skiing quite a lot actually on the weekends especially and um, also at work there are quite some changes going on these days so I've completely eaten up my whole backlog of uh, videos that's also the reason why um, I haven't been quite as consistent with uh, my upload schedule in recent weeks. I know I said the original plan was to upload like uh, 10 episodes in a row with the with some uh, special episodes in between, like the Riggy cab ride. And uh, yeah, s things looked actually pretty bright, even though I haven't completely finished all the episodes when I started this season of Verville. Um, yeah, I was thinking that I have plenty of time to wrap up the last few episodes as well, but I was procrastinating too much, so that's why you get to see this uh, very last episode of this season. Slightly delayed, but better late than never, am I right? But yeah, without further ado, Let's jump right into what we are building today. As you could have seen there, a whole new area deep into the Gotthard mountain valley just appeared out of nowhere and that's the work of Tentov. He's also a very talented City Skylines player and I've been following his work for quite some time already. And since he's Swiss based as well, he knows exactly what he's doing here. I mean. Right now on screen, it's uh, actually me implementing his uh, guest build that I imported with Move It. But uh, the latest in the cinematics, you get to see his awesome, incredible work. It's tr looking truly beautiful, especially the train station. Man, tent of how much time you must have spent for that train station. It's so insanely high detail. It's uh, truly wonderful to just look at it and see and uh, watch all the trains pass by and whatnot. It's uh, very, very mesmerizing. Thank you so much for your time that you spent here in, uh, in Verville. These kind of uh, guest builds are actually something I would like to continue for the next season of Verville 2, which is, yeah, pretty damn sure gonna be the very last one. So um, I'll try my best to wrap up this whole project, this four year old project by now um, in the next 10 episodes but um, like last year you'll have to wait for for them for quite some time I can't see myself uh, releasing uh, the next season before the end of the year um, probably I'm gonna aim for the Christmas season again I think that's quite fitting I don't know, for some reason the winter season for me is something um, very much related to gaming, uh, being nicely cuddled up in, in your room, the computer heating up the room more. <laughs> 
yeah, I think that goes pretty well together, but um, I guess uh, time will tell. I'm not gonna spoil the last season too much, but uh, as I already said, I really try my best to invite some other guest builders. If you have any ideas who I should ask to build something in Verville, um, yeah, please leave a comment down below. I'm really curious uh, what uh, creators you would like to see uh, building in Verville. But uh, yeah, I already prepared the airport quite a bit, so there shouldn't be too much work on that one. And this is, yeah, it's gonna be pretty damn neat. It's, it's a huge airport, the Zurich airport, but that's all the spoilers you get. The other parts are just wrapping up the whole series. Anyway, um, instead of talking what's gonna happen in the future, let's just uh, watch uh, here what exactly I'm doing right now. So, uh, as I already said, it's uh, I implemented all this uh, guest build stuff with uh, the move it restore function. This function allows you to uh, kind of mark all the stuff you would like to export with the move it tool. Just make sure to have the terrain or how is it called the follow terrain option enabled because otherwise you'll have to fight with uh, floating trees and whatnot. So this is very crucial to have this option activated. And right now I also imported all the procedural objects because they can't be imported and exported with uh, the move it mod. So um, yeah, you have to separate those two things. But uh, since procedural objects also has a restore function that puts the exported objects exactly in the same position like the exported file, save file that is, um, it's a piece of cake, it's really nothing crazy to do. But still, in the end it's City Skylines and there's always gonna be some issues, so I had to fix up quite some stuff, uh, even with the imported uh, stuff from Tentoff's build. For instance, I had to get rid of all the excess uh, catenaries for the, for the trains. Tentoff was actually so pa patient to also already make all the, the catenaries in a custom fashion. It's it's really insane. Uh, he even colored them so they look a little bit older like they are in real life um, for the Gotthard uh, route. Well, I was truly stunned when I, when I saw that. <laughs> Apart from the catenaries, I also had to hook up all the networks at the edge where the exported um, area um, kind of ended, if you know what I mean. So yeah, hooking up the highway, um, the, all the roads and of course also the rail infrastructure. Especially with the rail infrastructure I took the opportunity and also rebuilt this uh, stretch of of rails here because it wasn't perfectly laid out yet. This is kind of the last missing piece of the puzzle for this whole Gotthard mountain railway. Especially if you look down at the at the uh, creek there. It's not detailed yet but uh, you get to see that in a bit. But yeah, after all the networks uh, have been hooked up I could uh, start the simulation again and uh, obviously I also had to fix the um, the rail lines, but after that it was fully implemented already and fully functional as well. So that was um, very fast progress in a very short amount of time. Super cool. Thank you so much again, Tento. And if you would like to see some more creations uh, of his, definitely check out his YouTube channel or join my Discord, where he also po posts uh, some screenshots. Um, you'll find those links uh, down in the video description. Oh yeah, and before I forget it, um, the cinematics for this uh, episode here are also going to be um, a little bit different than usual. I kind of split it up in two parts. So the first part is like the, the regular stuff. You get to see all that we built uh, in today's episode or what uh, Tentov built. Um, but there's also going to be a second part where I try to record some kind of drone flyover. Um, across the whole valley basically. We start at the very bottom and end up at the start of the Gotthard tunnel. So uh, don't tune away too quickly when the first part's over, otherwise you're gonna miss that one. I hope you will enjoy it as well. 
And with that said, let's talk about what I'm doing right now here. So, we have a very similar highway bridge, like uh, very, very far down in the valley. And uh, I really wanted to carry over the style from, from that bridge. At first I thought, yeah, it's just gonna be a copy-paste uh, thing. But then I realized, oops, we are on a slope again, as usual. And uh, that's uh, what you can see me do right now here. I used the procedural object distort function to kind of squeeze all those uh, pillars and thicken the base of the bridge a bit more. But in the end, it's gonna look very similar or almost identical to the one we already built a couple of episodes back. So um, that's uh, pretty cool because I guess it makes sense that this highway would have been built or has actually been built like in one go. So we try to standardize a lot of stuff to uh, keep costs down and uh, increase production speed. Yeah, that's uh, just for the justification here. But I just wanted to have uh, another instance of uh, this uh, bridge type here. That was also a little bit tricky here with the, with the curve that the highway makes, but um, uh, nothing you can fix with uh, a little bit more patience with uh, procedural objects. On the other side here, I used this uh, concrete cube. Oh, actually, I used it on both uh, sides. Look at that. I think it's called anchor point or something uh, for the bridges. Yeah, and then redirecting the, the creek here a little bit so it doesn't flow right into the pillars. That wouldn't make too much sense because of the wear and tear the water would cause at the base of, uh, of those pillars. And then I figured why not putting a nice rock right underneath those pillars. So um, I don't know, just uh, looks like a pretty cool feature to have. Then off for the satisfying part of planting trees everywhere with uh, the tree brushes. And it was approximately at this point uh, when I figured that um, in this area, a little bit down the valley, come on time lapse, hurry up already. There we go. Um, yeah, basically I wanted to build another dam in, uh, in, this, in this area here because we had so huge cliff walls in here and I felt like hmm, it's gonna look a little bit unrealistic. Uh, maybe I can change the terrain a little bit by building a dam here. Um, so first of all, I tried to just copy paste uh, the dam we already built uh, a couple of episodes back. Um, but then I browsed around the Gotthard area on, on Google Earth a little bit and I saw this dam that has um, a different design to it. They just used kind of a dirt wall at, the, at one end to, to block the water instead of a gigantic concrete wall. So I tried to do something similar here. Right now you can see me working on the outlet of the dam. I figured it would make absolutely sense to have it canalized a little bit so the erosion is not too high um, at the cliff wall. Over, the, over there on the right side and then popping another water spawner. But guys, we are already basically at the end of uh, this uh, episode of Verville and also the whole season of Verville. So huge shout out to everyone still watching this series. Thank you so much for supporting me and especially thank you to my awesome patrons Connor, Rene, Sebastian, Toby, Dominic, James, Sebastian, Martin, Andreas and Matthias. Thank you guys so much for financially supporting me and um, yeah, probably you get to see some uh, POV rides here and there, but don't expect full-blown Verville episodes for quite some time from now on. I'm also experimenting a little bit with uh, shorts and um, we'll still keep uploading screenshots on Instagram, Twitter and definitely my Discord. So if you would like to still stay in touch a little bit, definitely consider joining my Discord server. Some pretty awesome people over there. And um, you also get to see or hear about progress for uh, my other series. All right, once again, thank you so much for watching. Have a great time and uh, we will get to see each other very, very soon at the end of the year. Take care, guys. Goodbye. <laughs>